Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 10. Let's look at this scripture, and I want to draw a, a, a truth out of it today. Look at verse number 10. Fear not thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isn't that good? Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them, even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, look at this, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. He said, I'll hold your hand, saying, Fear not. I'm going to preach this morning on the subject, Holding Hands with God. Holding Hands with God. The Bible has a lot to say about God's hands. You'd be surprised. Uh, talking about how he made things with his hands, how uh, he wrote in the, on the ground the Lord with his finger, the handwriting on the wall in, in Daniel that came out and appeared to that evil king, and all kinds of things about us being in his hand. No man can pluck us out of his hand, part of his hand, so forth and so on. And it shows uh, that God, here the Lord tells Israel, and we can definitely apply that spiritually to us, that he's holding our hand through a dark world. That's comforting to know. Um, when you're holding hands with somebody, it shows you're agreeing with them. You're not going to hold hands with somebody that you really disagree with. Uh, not long anyway. Something's going to give somewhere. And it shows uh, somebody that you really like. When you, uh, maybe people in here, when you were courting, when you first started out, and you, one of those first few dates, and you found yourself like, what's well, the first thing you've done? I hope, Lord, surely, uh, uh, you, you held hands. You never know about these perverts we're raising up nowadays. Uh, but when you first begin to like someone, the first thing you do would hold hands. And that shows uh, a lot. That shows a lot. Here, the Lord says, I will hold thy hand. Now, I'm going to give you just three little quick truths that will help you if, you'll, if you'll listen to this. And uh, I believe it will be a blessing to you. Three little quick truths about God and us holding hand. Now, I'm going to need, uh, where's my associate? Ants, where you at? Come up here. She's going to help me this morning. Uh, I just told her I need her to help me. And uh, Come on up here and help me, man. Uh, she's going to help me this morning. And I'm going to let her stand right here. And yesterday was her birthday. And so she was 10 years old yesterday. And she's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and so uh, she's my youngest granddaughter, and uh, uh, the other boy is sitting right over there, being Have, ain't he? Look at Big T, how good he's being. All right, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to represent how the Lord does us, and I'm going to stand over here, and I'm gonna hold, he said, I'll hold your right hand. I've got her right hand. I got to studying this a little bit, and I thought, my goodness, if he's holding our right hand, then he's over here, but then there's another scripture over there somewhere that says, He'll hold us with the right hand of his righteousness. So if it's his right hand and our right hand, he's doing it like this and helping us, helping us up or helping us across or helping us. That's, pretty, that's a pretty cool thought, buddy. I mean, that God's got us like that. So she's gonna, I'm going to represent, she's going to represent a Christian, me and you, and the Lord holding our hand in a dark world. Stay right there just a second, honey. Number one. Number one, I want to say this. God is the one doing the holding. He didn't say, you hold on to me now. He said, I'm going to hold on to you. One of the greatest days of my Christian life is when I learned that I wasn't holding on to him. He was holding on to me. You know, my girls, uh, oh, they're this, this morning, or two, they're around here somewhere. Let me have this one for now. Uh, uh, when they were little, when they were little, I'd take them, you know, we'd go to town somewhere, and Chris and Corey 
that one and the youngest one, when they were this high, people thought they were twins. They were, they were so close. And I remember we'd go to town. You go to a Christmas parade or something like that, all right? We're out here in a Christmas parade like this, and I'd grab one of them by one hand, I'd grab the other one by the other hand, and we'd go through that crowd like this right here. They wasn't holding on to me. I was holding on to them. How many of you kids, when you're little, I said, hey, you're killing me. You're breaking my fingers. Cause, you, know, you don't want to let them go. You don't want to lose them in that big old crowd. And, and, and that's the way God is, buddy. I'm glad. Listen, I'd have let go a long time ago. I ain't strong enough to hold on. But he's holding on to me. I can tell all these many years I've been saved that there's somebody holding on to me. I'd have never made it, y'all. I'd have never made it. Down just a tad, please. I'd have never made it if I'd have been the one holding on. It's he is holding on to me and I remember I, I remember right, we're going through a crowd like this and we're going we're going we're going we're going I'm up here looking you know how many of you are little uh, how many of you remember when you was little and your mama or your, or your daddy just drug you didn't know where he's going Lord you didn't know which way's home uh, you, yeah, you just know there's a pulling you through there like that right there that's the way God's doing that I like that song it says in just a second I like that song it says my Lord knows the way through the wilderness all I have to do is follow my Lord knows the way through the wilderness all I have to do is follow now, I'm going to tell you this morning ladies and gentlemen you let him hold on to you you let him don't fight him don't squirm like a little kid I don't want to, I don't want to. You just say, uh, you know, years ago there was a song. There was an old song and it was kind of corny. We used to say cheesy. Y'all kids say now. It was sort of cheesy, I guess. But, you know, that song had a little bit of truth in it. We used to laugh about it when I first got saved that song. And uh, 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 some old half country gospel song and it went put your hand in the hand of the man that steal the water put your hand in the hand of the man that calm the sea take a look at yourself and you can look at other differently a yodel a little bit or something uh, how many of you have ever heard that old song well, that was a hundred years old and they used to sing that and we used to laugh and make fun of it. you know what though that's truth really it really is I mean I'll put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee brother put your hand in the hand of the man to calm the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently by putting your hand in the hand of the man uh, the, from Galilee. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad one day when I was 18 years old, I reached up I mean, he reached down. Hey, he grabbed me, and he's had a hold of my hand ever since. Sometimes he he pulls me through kicking and screaming. Sometimes I fight him, but most of the time I got enough sense to say, I say, you know the way. You know what you're doing. I've trusted you. He's never led me wrong one time. We've never got lost, not one time. He's You can't get lost him holding your hand, brother. He's he, he GPS, uh, uh, the inventor of the whole thing. He knows where everything is. And ladies and gentlemen, it represents his, uh, uh, he's doing the one the holding. Now let me say a couple of things about it. Number one, about him doing the holding, it represents his presence. It represents his presence. Come here, Hans. Look at here. I can't go too far from her if I'm holding her hand. People say, well, it just seems like God's so far away. He ain't going no farther than that. He's got your hand. As a matter of fact, he said, I will never, what, leave you. I ain't never left one of my kids out in the crowd uh, out there where they could, something bad could happen to them. I mean, I'm just an old sorry, good for nothing sinner daddy. You know that God is not, listen, God hadn't forgot you. He knows the bills you got to pay. He knows your marriage situation. He knows that. He's not going to leave you now. He's not going to say, he don't get you in a jam and then run off and leave you. Buddy, when, when, the, when, the, when it gets really scary, he holds you that much tighter. Uh, when you're not able to go, you say, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. Don't worry about it. I do. You come on. Lord, I don't know which way to go. Don't worry about it. My presence will go with you. My presence will go with you. And I'll give you rest. My presence will go with you. I can't get too far away from her holding her hand. And you need to understand that about the Lord. Just because you can't feel him don't mean he ain't there, people. Just because you don't see stuff happening don't mean God's left you. Just because you feel like he's a million miles away don't mean that God's gone. He ain't gone nowhere. He's still there. He's still right with you. He's still right beside you. He's still got a hold of your hand. He's still, and, and he's still got you just right where he wants you. And brother, I'm telling you, that's 
scripture tells me that God is the one doing the holding, not me. Not only the presence of God, but the protection of God. The protection of God. See? What if, what if me and her's walking in town and somebody's going to try to get her? I'm going to say, whoa. No, you don't, neither. You, you think he's bigger than you are? I really ain't got no gun. I, I, I probably should. Uh, but you know what? I'm not going to let nobody get her without a fight. I'm not going to do it. If a man tried to come up and get her, I'd fight him. By, I'd, I'd, I'd punch his eyeballs. I'd kick him in the gut. I didn't, wouldn't you? And you should for your kids. Right? It, it, it don't only represent his presence. It represents his protection. And I'm telling you, the Lord's fought for me many a time. Lord's fought them off Brother Danny many a time when my enemies would have swallowed me up, when there were times when they said he'll never make it, he's gone, and I had a lot of enemies. It was just like the Lord said, don't you worry about it, son, and he just went through there whacking them down like a weed eater, buddy. I just wham, 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 just knocking them down, knocking them down. It represents his protection. It represents his presence. But not only that, it represents his promises. He said, I will never see this. Preaching ain't as easy as people think it is. And I'm screaming the whole time I'm up here. You got to get in shape, man. She's, in, she's probably in pretty good shape. Uh, she'll do a backflip for the talent show Tuesday night. You don't want to miss. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, it, it represents his promise. It represents his promise. He cannot lie. It is impossible for God to lie. I said, honey, I'm not going to leave you. Have you ever, okay, you can sit down here for a second. Have you ever took your kids up to uh, Carolina Hemlock? Or somewhere way up there in the mountain where there's big old rocks and, they's, they's, and, you, and you have to cross the creek or the river when it's real little. What do you do? You grab that hand. Like old Frank. I don't know where, where's he at in the nursery. Old Frankie. Uh, you, when they're that little, you grab their hand. When you come to a rock, you just pick them up and carry them right over it by one on the other. Oh, I catch you know. They don't know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and how many of you ever done your kids like that? That ain't bad, is it? That ain't me. Uh, as, and, and you just pick them up and carry them over the hard spots, over the ditch. They can't jump a ditch. Pick them up, one arm, brother, sling them over here on the other side. And, and, and that, it's good. I mean, it's, it shows your promise. It shows your promise. Honey, I'm not going to run off and leave you. I'm not going to run off and leave you. Amen. Amen. Woo! I'm not going to run off and leave you. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go over here and just say, I'm going to have me a good time. You make it the best way you can. That ain't the way God does us. I'm glad, hallelujah, that when he starts on this journey, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But I'll go with you even to the end of this whole world. And you say, well, I can't feel him. It don't mean nothing. He's still there. He'll go with you through discouragement. He'll go with you to, to in the operating room. He'll go with you in there to the divorce court. He'll go with you in the funeral home. When it seems like you ain't got a friend in the world, he'll stay right there with you to it all. That's truth number one. God's the one doing holding. Number two, what we receive by holding hands with God. I've already touched on this. Number one, we receive his guidance. He'll guide you. It's all the way through the Bible. He guided his children. It's like this. Do you know how to get to Charlotte from here? You know how to get to Charlotte from here. Okay, I hope you don't. You shouldn't. You're only 10 years old. I know how to get to Charlotte. You hop in that forerunner sitting right out there, and I can take you to Charlotte. My God, she gets my guidance. She gets my guidance. Lord, some of you kids, some of these people, they could... They couldn't get home from school without somebody taking them. And they depend on us. It would be nice if we depended on the Lord like that. Sometimes we think, well, I think I need to do this, and I think I might, and we try to hu humanly figure out what we should do in certain circumstances. And I'll tell you what you better do. Sit down there just a second. I'll tell you what you better do. You better just let him guide you. Sometimes the Lord leads in ways that you might not think are, are, are uh, uh, you know, Right or or even best, but he, my Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. I can tell you story after story after story. One time years ago, I had to preach at this church, and I was only I was probably only twenty. 21, 22, I, I just started preaching when I was 19, and we used to preach on the street all the time. Some guy met me on the street over in Asheville, and he said, I want you to come preach at our church tonight. 
And we come home in the morning. I said, man, I get to preach at a church tonight, y'all. Y'all, I get to actually preach in a church. We preach on the street all the time. And so uh, we took off over to Asheville, and he, he, of course, there wasn't GPS. There wasn't cell phones. Uh, they, we, uh, and he drew me a little map on a piece of paper. And he, drew, he said, you come off Interstate 40, and you get off 240. Y'all know where 240 is over there. You go around Asheville and then go right through town, and you can go. That goes right by the mall, and cut up 23 North goes up up in the mountains, and and you can go on to West Asheville that way. And he said, you cut off here, and you take the first exit, and then the the church will be across the road over there. I said, okay, I got it. But that guy who drew that map uh, didn't know where I was from, and he lived on the other side of Asheville. So he drew them out. It was backwards, exactly backwards. So every time it was, it was supposed to turn right, it would have been a left. Well, I was going over there that evening, and I, I was, I mean, uh, I, I'd been to Asheville several times, but not a whole lot. I and mean, I drove over there, and me and these boys, I had that old van, I think I had that old yellow Ford van, and we was driving that thing up through there, and there was traffic over here and traffic over there. And I said, now I'm looking for this exit, I'm looking for this exit, I'm looking for this exit, and traffic sometimes gets beside you, and you can't get off where you want to get off, you know, it just sort of forces you. Uh, and that's the way it was. I said, oh, my goodness, God, we're supposed to be going that way. We're supposed to be going that way, and I can't. I can't get over there. And we just went. I had to go off this way. And around. I said, well, I don't know what else to do. We'll go down here and turn around somewhere. And it was getting late, and we went down there, and I said, the first exit I come to, I'm going to turn around and go back so we can get on the right road. And I'll be, I pulled off that exit, and, there, and right there in front of me was that church. I said, there it is. And it was like the Lord just, uh, the Lord, I mean, I was right. I was right back in them days. <laughs> I mean, buddy, I mean, uh, we, I, I, the Lord led me right to that thing. And I can't tell y'all, I can't tell y'all how many times that I was supposed to preach somewhere and somebody made me a map that seemed like you had never, and just by some weird something or another like that, I went right to it. And you know what? I, kept, I, got, to, I got to thinking after a while, he's gotten me. He's gotten me. He's gotten me. And the Bible said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. And Lord, it just felt like, oh my goodness, the God of heaven, the God that made the earth takes time to guide little Danny. I said, hallelujah. He promised that and he'll do you. He, he won't lead you wrong. He'll lead you right. Listen, can't everybody in here testify that you've done some mighty dumb, stupid things by not letting him guide you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But when he got, it represents his guidance. It represents him taking care of you. Not only that, you know what it represents? His affection. His affection. He don't just run off and leave you. He's affectionate towards you. He's touched with a feeling of our infirmities. When you hurt, he hurts. When you're sad, he's sad. When something breaks your heart, it breaks his heart. Just sit there just a second hand. How many of us would testify when our kids hurt, we hurt? And most parents, most of y'all would agree with me here this morning. When it comes right down to it, you'd rather say, I'd rather me hurt than them. You know, if I was getting sick or something. Of course we would. Any, any parent that's worth anything would. I'll never forget. Years ago, I took two of my daughters on a trip to Germany. And I was going on a mission trip, and one of them was too young, just a baby, and I let my, ba my, my sister babysit one of them, so I took the other two. And uh, we, right before it was time, it was planned for months, and, I was, and they'd never been that far, and, I'd, and I was going to Germany, and I was going to preach over there, and we went, we went to the, and lo and behold, one of them, got sick with the flu before we left. I mean the flu. Bad, temperature, vomiting, throwing up, the whole thing for about two or three days. Well, it, it was to the point where we almost said, I don't know if you're going to be able to go. And that one that I'm talking about said, I'll be all right, let's go. I'll be all right. So we got to the airport in Charlotte, and this was going to be like seven or eight days. We got to the airport in Charlotte, and the other one started getting the flu symptoms. We getting ready to get on an airplane for nine hours. Nine hours. And 
We got on this airplane, and if you ain't got the flu, an airplane that long will make you feel like you have. I mean, it's an awful feeling. Jet lag, you've heard of that? that that's, that's real. That's true. I hate flying an airplane. I hate it. People say, oh, it must be nice to get to fly. I hate it. I wouldn't care if I never flew in another airplane. Next time I fly, I want to be in the rapture when the Lord comes. You know what the old preacher said? Lo, I am with you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, but anyway, uh, I did. I got to fly to Florida here pretty soon. I dread it. Uh, it's awful. Makes you feel bad. And we got on that airplane. The other one got sick. About four years old. Five, six, nine, five, six. Somewhere along that. Maybe five, four. I mean, sick, sick. And you imagine. You imagine, have you ever had the flu? That awful feeling, you just want to go to bed and turn the lights out and you don't want nobody talking. You're on an airplane. It's like being a carowind nine hours. And you're going up and down, up and down, up and down. If you ain't sick, that'll make you sick. Turbulence, hitting there. People, their, their chairs are littler than these. And they're about not even half as big and you're sitting just like this. Here's somebody, here's somebody, here's somebody. They ain't, you can't move in them things. They don't, I don't know who they make them things for, but they ain't for normal people. And they try to scrub you in there like this. Well, she got sick. And I said, honey, you think you're going to throw up? She said, and I think one time we went to the bathroom, come back, sit down. There's always these bunch of people looking at you. <laughs> That's what you want to do. And I said, and, and I said, honey, are you sick again? She said, you feel like you're going to throw up? You know that look? Y'all ever seen that look? They're green. Their face is greener. And about that time before I could get any of them little, like keep them little barf bags on them planes. You know, that's what they call them. And you know, I didn't have time to get that. Here it comes. <laughs> and I reached out. And I thought, Lord, this airplane, she's got on her clean clothes and everything. And I caught it in my hand like this. I caught it in my hand like this right here. You say, Brother Danny, you let her puke in your hand? Yeah, I did. That's my kid. Now, I promise you one thing. If it had been anybody else's kid, I wasn't going to let them puke in my hand. <laughs> Ain't nobody else going to puke in my hand but my, my kid. I want to puke. They say when you're on an airplane, what you're supposed to do is pull your shirt out like that. You're just like goes down your chest like gravy going out of there. But, that, but anyway, she, she threw it up like that. I'm, I'm helping you. You won't have to spend so much on dinner today. I said, honey, you all right? Boop, here it comes. I caught it in my hand. And those people were looking at me. I wanted to throw it at them. <laughs> Keep your nose out of here. None of your business, old woman. And I held it like that, and we went back there, and I got cleaned up. Man, I thought about that, and I lowered Talk to me, and I said, glory to God, hallelujah. How many, many, many times I threw up my junk, and he caught it with his hand. How many times have you made a mess, and God cleaned it up? How many times has he literally let you throw up on him? Woo, hallelujah, people. That shows his affection. That shows his affection. You got to care about somebody to let them do that. They ain't no, listen, I'm bad around that stuff. I don't even want to be in the same room where somebody's threw up. We had a kid threw up in the choir one time. Oh, then I just want to leave. You know, I can't stand being in the same room with it. But when it's my kid, I'll do what I got to do. It shows his affection. There's been a lot of times when I know that the enemies, my enemies were looking at me, did you see what he done? Did you see what he done? Did you see what he done? And the Lord said, Hush, don't you worry about it, okay? He's my kid. He threw up. I'm going to help him get better. You mind your own business. I believe he's done that for me. He's done that for me. Ooh, God, did you see what Danny done? Yeah, I did. What you, don't worry about it. You, you do what you need to do. I'm telling you this morning, it shows his affection. It shows his fellowship. Number three, and I'm through. Life never ends when you're holding hands with God. Life never ends when you're holding hands with God. You know who did that? Enoch, back in Genesis. The Bible said Enoch walked with God. Come on, honey. Enoch walked with God. I'm representing God. She's representing Enoch. Enoch walked with God. The Bible said he walked with God 
And the Lord said, boy, look at all them stars I made up there, ain't it? He said, amen, God. And uh, uh, he said, uh, look at all them plants. Them really ain't really the right color for planets. That's all paper we had this morning. Uh, and the sun looks a little weird there too, but I made that sun. You like that? And Enoch says, amen, God. And, uh, and there's, you know, you, Pluto, Pluto ain't a planet no more. Science changed its mind. They bad for that. And, uh, uh, they, and you know, them other ones I read the other day were at uh, Neptune, and some of them ain't nothing but gas. Is that right, Brother Mike? And, and you can't even walk on them. They're not so high. I mean, how do they know that? Maybe you, can, maybe you can help us with that, huh? How do they know that? And it's just gas hold, hold, held together by gravity. They don't know where it come from, neither. And, and they're out there. They're out there floating around. You like all that? I made that. You know, and, and we're, and we're, we're, we're uh, man, look at our them trees and rocks like that waterfall and, and blackberries and strawberries and, and bananas and cantaloupe and watermelon and, and green beans and steak. I'm helping you out a little bit more now, ain't I? Uh, and uh, rice and gravy and, and uh, yeast rolls. And I, got, I let man cre- have all this stuff. And he said, and one day they just walked and walked and walked. And the Lord said, well, Enoch, about time to go. Instead of you going home, why don't you just come and spend a day with me where I live? And Enoch said, amen, I'll do whatever you say. And he goes, and he's gone. And he winds up in heaven just like that. The Bible said Enoch was not. I love that. I love it. Enoch was not. That ain't even a sentence. Enoch was not. Not what? He just wasn't. He was not. Not nowhere to be found. <laughs> he wasn't not nowhere around no more, brother. He's gone. He's walking with God, and then he's not. You say, he's not, not what? He's just not. That's the best way to say it. He's walking with God, and then he's not. He's gone. Time and life never ends when you're holding hands with God. I like that song, Hand in Hand, We Walk Each Day. Hand in Hand. Along the way, walking thus, I cannot stray, hand in hand with Jesus. I heard a story one time. Years ago, I heard this story. I never forgot it. And it said this preacher went to see this old, older gentleman, very, very old, on his deathbed near. And, he's, and he went in to see this guy, and he's sitting there, and there, there laid the old man in his bed like this, and he had a chair right here, like that, and another chair over here. And the preacher said, I've come in to talk with you. Pop, is that all right? I'm going to pray with you a little bit. And he started to sit down, sit down. He said, nope, nope, don't sit down there. The preacher said, oh, okay. He said, that's where Jesus sits. He said, huh? He said, Jesus comes in here every day and he sits with me. He said, that's where he sits. And the preacher said, okay, man. Okay, I ain't going to take his seat. I'll come over here and talk. And he went over and talked to him, prayed with him, spent a little while visiting with him, talked to him like that. And he, sa- he left a little while. And he, sa- he said, I'll check on him in a few days. A few days later, he seen that, his daughter. I found he said, how's your daddy? I think it was about a week later, too. To she said, preacher, you didn't hear? Daddy went home to be the Lord the day after you was here. Daddy's gone. And the preacher said, oh, man, I am so sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. Your dad went home. She said, no, don't be good. Not, don't be sorry. She said, preacher, you wouldn't believe it. She said, did you know that chair that, he, that sat beside him where he said Jesus sat all the time? And his daddy said, yeah, I sure do. He said, I felt the Lord in there when he said that. And he said, well, that morning we went in, we found Daddy a, a, a corpse. He was laying there stiff. And they said, my Daddy was laying there like that dead, and his head was right there like toward that chair, and his hand was like that. And he said, it's like the Lord said, okay, son, you ready to go? Give me your hand. And took him right on into heaven. Life never ends. When you're holding hands with God. Listen, people. None of us wants to die, right? Nobody, you don't look forward to dying. But if you got to go, that's the way to go right there. 
That's the way you want to go. Live your life so that when that time comes and if it comes, you'll be able to just stick out your hand and say, Lord, you've been holding my hand all these years. It's closer to your house than it is mine now. Let's go. And let him pull you on out of this world. It's going to happen for every person in here that's holding hands with God. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Our heads are bowed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, nobody's moving. People are praying. When you ladies come to pray. Is God speaking to your heart? Is God speaking to your heart this morning? Is God speaking to your heart? Is there somebody in here this morning say, Preacher? I'm not holding hands with God. I need to. My life's going nowhere. I need to put my hand in His hand. Some of them's up here doing that right now. Maybe you're here this morning and say, Pastor, I definitely need that in my heart and life. I need to put my hand in His hand. Would you pray for me? Would you let us pray for you this morning? Just slip up your hand. Slip up your hand. Take it right back down. Anybody? I see your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless y'all. Hands all over the building going up. Anybody else? Say, Pastor, pray for me. Pastor, pray for me. All right. We're going to pray. We're not going to embarrass you. Nobody's going to come to you or nothing like that. I'm going to ask you. Why don't you just come? Why don't you just come right now? We're not going to sing. We're not going to embarrass you. We've got another couple coming here. Some men and women need help praying up here. Some of you ladies, one of you ladies pray for this young lady over here. Men, please. God speaking to your heart. Is God speaking to your heart? If you're here this morning, why don't you just slide right out of your seat? Come on, just slide right out of your seat and get down here this morning and ask the Lord to do what needs to be done. I'm going to pray with you. Come on, right now. Come on. Let's get in this altar right now. Come on. Come on. No, we're not going to sing. She's just going to play softly. Why don't you come right now? Saying, preacher, I want the Lord to hold my hand. I want him to hold my hand. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on this morning. Come on this morning. This is your chance. This is your chance. This is your chance. Put your hand in the hand of the man that calms the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Come on. Come on this morning. Come on this morning. You let God help you. Come on, step out there, friend. Step out there. Let's make that step this morning. Make that step. You need to make it right now. You say, listen, you can't go wrong with his guidance. You don't even know what you're supposed to do. That's why you need him to guide you. You don't know what's best. I don't either. That's why we need him to guide us. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on right now. Come on right now. Come on right now. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. God will bless you. Will you do it? Will you do it right now? We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Would you come, ma'am, sir, daddy, mama, brother, sister, young person, teenager? Would you come right now? Come right now. Would you come right now? Would you come right now? We're going to pray. Our Heavenly Father. We sure do thank you for these truths this morning from your word. I thank you, Lord, this morning for your blessings on our lives. We pray now that you'd bless these on the altar and these that want to be and need to be, that you'd touch every single life here this morning. Have you in our hearts today. Lord God, meet back with us tonight at 6 o'clock. Bless the services. Have you in our hearts. Do what ought to be done. God, get glory and honor to yourself. We'll thank you and praise you for it. And I pray, Lord, for that one or those here this morning that may be leaving with a heavy heart and maybe didn't make that step they need to make. Help them, Lord, to make up their mind. They're going to make that thing right before it's too late. And to do it today while they still have time. We don't know when you're coming. We know it's soon. But I pray that you bless them, help them to get ready. In Jesus' name we ask it and for his sake. Amen. 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 All right, all hearts clear. Amen. 
Now, you don't have to leave here in the same shape you came in. You can get fixed. You can get it fixed up here this morning, get your record right with God, and I hope that you will. Come back this evening at 6 o'clock. I'm going to do something completely different. And uh, don't forget, tomorrow night, Bible school, 6.30. Everybody be here at 6.30. Don't, don't be late. We got some good stuff planned in the preliminaries. Bring the kids. If you, have to, you, can, you can drop them off, come back and get them. Uh, 6.30 to 8.30, we're having classes for every age group, and we're really, really excited about it. Okay? All right. Let's, let's be dismissed with a prayer.